Hello everyone and welcome back guys to round 3 of our F1 2020 Fantasy Recap. Where today we're here back after what was, for the most part, I think it's fair to say, a fairly, fairly standard Hungarian Grand Prix. Now heading into this weekend, obviously we'd seen Hamilton win his first race of the season after a couple of brilliant races at Austria and then heading into Hungary some people really sort of expect this track to produce some brilliant races I don't really know why in all honesty I sort of had you know sort of quiet sort of spirits for this race if we get a good one brilliant if we don't then I wasn't really too surprised in all honesty but obviously a quick recap of the weekend uh, Mercedes in qualifying just dominant. I don't think anyone was expecting anything different uh, in all honesty. Racing point, finally, it looked like they were going to start paying off. As you can see, obviously, hence why we have Perez and Stroll as well as racing point in our team for this weekend. So it was, it was all looking good. We were all looking up on that front there. And then obviously we had uh, Ferrari sort of back where you nearly expect Ferrari to be. Uh, still obviously a long way to go and you know they were what fifth and sixth on the grid so they were able to beat out both the Red Bulls and then ultimately yeah were closer to where they should be but still well over a second uh, behind Mercedes when qualifying was all said and done and then obviously looking towards the race it was drama before it even kicked off Max Verstappen I've got no idea how that team fixed that car but it worked for my F1 fantasy team so thank you very much Red Bull a uh, very very useful to have at the end of the day there and you know credit where it's due to max as well obviously he did a fantastic job in the grand prix but yeah that sort of all kicked off as well uh looking at the, that side of the thing but focusing more on our team then obviously we've got our three teams here today safe to say pretty solid weeks on the whole i'm i'm quite happy obviously we're not really too worried as to what these two teams do uh, in all honesty, this one I sort of low-key want to do, well, as much as I like pretty much all the drivers on here, as well as Williams as a team. Uh, yeah, it's more just to see how few points you can score in the F1 Fantasy League as well. But yeah, having a look though, a quick recap then of our five drivers from my serious team. Then Hamilton, pole position, fastest lap, race win, fairly standard weekend, 26 points on the board. Nice and simple, I guess. That just seemed pretty, pretty textbook from Hamilton. Uh, he's, he, hopefully, this means now he's back in his mojo and that he's ready for world title number seven. Uh, 86 race wins, 90 pole positions. He's, there's a fair chance, yeah, I think, unless we see something absolutely crazy by one team that Schumacher's records are either going to be going this year or early into next year as well. So, solid day at the office for Hamilton. I know, obviously, and I've don't really want to talk about it too much in this video because I don't think it's sort of the right thing uh, for this video. But I know sort of the biggest gripe for Hamilton this weekend was just obviously, again, uh, all the issues with F1's lack of coordination of a BLM. Which, uh, if you saw the clip over on Twitter of Ted Kravitz talking about it, that definitely pretty much there is sort of my opinions as well. I share pretty much the same views as Ted Kravitz on the issue there. But enough talking about that. More focus on our F1 fantasy uh, here today. Verstappen. Like I mentioned, the team did a fantastic job to get that car even working again, ready for the race. The fact he stacked it with, what, like 15 minutes, 20 minutes before race start, and they were able to get that thing sorted is just short of a miracle, I'll be honest. And safe to say, Maxi Boy, you know, he repaid him. They had a rough Saturday. Then Friday, the car looked absolutely everywhere. Uh, Saturday, the car still looked basically absolutely everywhere. Sunday for Verstappen? It all seemed to come together in the end. I'm not too sure what they managed to do, what sort of little tweaks they can uh, within part Fermi regulations that made that car work so much better in the race. Uh, but yeah, Verstappen got a brilliant start around the outside, shot up from 7th on the grid uh, up into P3, I think basically by the, well it was by the end of lap 1, he was up into 3rd place obviously. He was helped a little bit by, uh, uh, I'm forgetting names, Perez and Bottas, obviously Bottas is jump start sort of that kind of is but kind of wasn't and then obviously Perez not having a particularly good start either just behind him I'm guessing Sergio was distracted uh behind uh Vax Verstappen uh, sorry behind Valtteri Bottas sorry even I should say as well of the start there but yeah Verstappen got him into P3 Stroll got a little bit unlucky through the pit stop window but based on the rest of the race I think he was always going to struggle to do a whole lot more there so Verstappen a P2 we we got the top two we can't complain about that uh, Perez, like I mentioned, didn't get off to a particularly good getaway. Uh, I think Twitter clips leaked today, actually, at the time of recording this, of an absolutely mad save that he was able to pull off 
fairly early on into the Grand Prix now, however, so I've earned a lot more respect for him for that one as well. But a pretty quiet day for both of the racing points after the absolute, you know, sort of banging qualifying session on Saturday. Uh, yeah, sort of Stroll, he was up towards the front for the first few laps as well still, but sort of teetered off in terms of pace. And then, yeah, unfortunately, Paris as well, uh, pretty much from the start, was always sort of doing all right, but he was never really there sort of making an impact at the end of the day. And then Paul McLaren... Lando Norris, obviously most notably, we probably should have had Sainz in if we could have this weekend. It just wasn't a good weekend for Lando, unfortunately. Just car didn't seem to quite work the way I think he wanted it to, and it was just a very, very quiet weekend uh, with nothing really to mention there. In terms, though, quickly... Oh, excuse me, sorry. In terms of quickly then at my other teams, you can see our second team, obviously, having a quick rundown, Charles Leclerc. Uh, Ferrari screwed him on tyres, pretty simple as that. Sebastian Vettel, a pretty... Decent race, a few sort of really sort of mistakes that we've seen far too often from Seb locking up under sort of critical conditions and everything like that was still a bit rusty, hence why he lost the place to Albon. Again, Albon, it was in a weird way, I was not a particularly big Red Bull fan or, you know, I'm not some sort of Red Bull sport or anything like that. It was nice to sort of see him speaking out against the team, sort of saying, look, a team is a team at the end of the day. Not everything can be based on Verstappen. I need a car that can work as well, uh, which I think has always been Red Bull's downfall, unfortunately, in the recent years. And to be honest, I don't really expect much of what Alan said to change anything with that team, but who knows? Uh, you never really quite know as to what will happen. Raikkonen, uh, awful qualifying last. I can't remember the last time he qualified last in a Grand Prix. Uh, supposedly, was it 20? No, I, I genuinely can't remember. It might have been years and years ago. Uh, for all I know that and then just a pretty quiet day Alfa Romeo just seems to be on the back foot this year uh, obviously they've been hurt by Ferrari's power struggles as well uh, obviously because Ferrari power units not to the same degree that we saw from Ferrari but yeah they've sort of been neutered as well on that sense and then Danny Kvyat a pretty solid day out there wasn't really much I can't remember where he finished so that's sort of said enough about Danny Kvyat at the end of the day as well as Alfa Tauri there obviously Gasly uh, the car blew up it blew up twice, or it nearly blew up in qualifying and then blew up in the race. Uh, so yeah, tough day out for the other Alpha Tauri driver there. But Kvyat, pretty quiet showing, I guess. And then obviously our experimental team, Latifi. Not even going to talk about it. I don't know what that was. Uh, obviously he got a bit of, had a mega start, to be fair to him. And then just it all fell apart when the team decided to release him in front of sights. And then he was nowhere for the rest of the afternoon. Uh, Russell, again, just needs to work on his lap one, doesn't he? He, he could be right there towards, you know, towards the top 10 if he just kept it cleaner and maybe a little bit more aggressive at the start. Uh, but you can understand in those conditions, obviously, he doesn't really want to risk it too much, as well as the fact, obviously, he's only had two, two, three races, Hungary and Hungary last year, and then the first two races of this season where he's even been close to the midfield. So I guess, obviously, still a lacking experience. Then we go on to our Haas boys. Brilliant strategy gamble. Shame it was done illegally, but, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. It was worth it because Haas still were able to get Magnussen a point at the end of the day there. And then again, Raikkonen, just a pretty quiet showing. And then obviously Williams, yeah, just didn't have a particularly good race at the end of the day. Their race pace seems to be a lot worse than they're able to get it hooked up on the one lappers there. So in terms, though, of the league, let's have a look how we're all getting on. How many members are we up to as well? Quickly, 244. If you haven't already, make sure you join the league down below as well obviously so we can try and get up to 250 members we are 21st i'll take that rather happily you can see let's have a look then uh so it is uh mr kobe who is at the top of the standings he mega drivered hamilton this week there lost out a couple of points uh with lando norris and you got perez stroll russell and mercedes so that's an interesting one he's only got one top driver but he has also got mercedes in the car there. so a very very similar team to ourselves but yeah just putting russell in instead of max verstappen and then able to get mercedes in instead of racing points seems to be working so far for him as i mean he's first and second they're tied actually a three-way toe at the top uh between him and george there as you can see he has also got hamilton stroll perez and norris instead of russell he's got giovanazzi squeezed in there as well who i think scored him a couple of extra points there so 283 yeah versus 278 there so congrats to george i think that's the highest score of the week in all honesty i don't think we can check uh you know sort of per week on our team no we can't unfortunately by the looks of it and you can see there christian uh down in p4 he had hamilton as well he had a good job putting magnuson in there that was a strategy that played off well and then again both racing points 
Lando Norris and the Mercedes, 293 uh, because of his gamble on Magnussen. Good job done by you, buddy. Then we got TG TSG Awesome up in P5 again. Uh, and in, oh, very, very interesting that one. He's managed to get Bottas in uh, with Racing Point, so perhaps we need to look at that. However, I think uh, if he hadn't have Mega Drive at Hamilton, we would have scored more than him uh, this week. Dive Bomb GP in sick. They had a Wolfpack, NF's Ham Sandwich, a Roberto Team 3, and then Hazard Racing rounding out the top 10. And you can see further down the order, uh, we've got Kobe's third team, a little way off his top two, but still doing all right. They're just behind the back markers. Sat in at P12. Other ones to notice off the back. See Nexus F1 team up in P20. Just five points ahead of myself there. As we were able to score 171. I'm going to say is quite a good score at the end of the day. They're very, very happy with that. And happy you know, still to be in the top 25 of our own league at the moment. Then you can see we're just ahead of David there in P, uh, P22. Cody. His third team in P22 as well. Sorry, tied 22nd. I think his third team, yeah, his third team is his best team at the moment. As you can see, there's the back markers. Number two, Brandon up in P25. A good result by him as a wilder. And then further down the order, let's have a look. We've got Connor, obviously one of our good friends. Pink plebs uh, up in P35. Uh, then we've got Sam, who obviously led after the first week. Not a particularly good day out in the office for him. Uh, yeah, just nothing of really any particularly good scores there. So he's unfortunately now back down into 39th place overall. There you can see further down, though, to get yourself inside the top 50. You need 514 points at the moment. There's Hayden, our good friend as well, racing as Tracing Point F1 this season. Both Mercedes, both Racing Points. Racing Point and Norris, no real surprises there. 156 points. Good job done. At the end of the day there. Further down then. Anything else to really sort of notice. As uh, you can see as we scroll down towards the bottom half of the top 100. It's broken down in P76. And then to get yourself inside the top 100 then. You need 436 points at the moment there. And you can see Jack Carl Riley, One of my good friends. Tied in 101st with a few people there on 435 uh, George's third team there, 433 points on the board. Then is my good mate Kyle, uh, 428 points down in 113th. Not too good at the moment from him. And then further down towards the rear of the field, there's Kyle's team one. 399 points there, barely 100 off the bottom team there at the end of the day. And then you can see Baltimore GP, 171st. 183 Esports, 168. Not a very good day out in the office for either of those teams. And then let's have a look. Right at the rear of the field. We're, we're ahead of someone. Accidentally. We, we managed to beat someone. Hey Lewis. Why are you so slow? With Russell Latifi. Vettel. Leclerc and Ricardo there. As well as Ferrari. He's got 58 points. But I'm guessing he's only joined this week. Uh, hence why obviously our 41 points at the moment is still higher than him. So we're on 61. So I'm going to claim we're still... I'm going to claim, yeah, we're still last at the moment. To be honest, I'm very much expecting us to still be last. 61 points in comparison to second last is... Who was second last? I think it was... A, yeah, Jeremy's Joker team, I think, has been here since the start. He actually did really well because he turboed Stroll uh, this weekend. And he's on 156 points to our 61. We are making it happen at the moment there. And then our meme team as well, 225th. It's, it's not been a good season so far for our other two teams. But we're nearly inside the top 20. We're still right at the very bottom as well. We're just we're sweeping the table as best as possible we're there. But thank you all so much for watching this video. Make sure you let me know down in the comments below. Obviously, if I missed your team, how well you guys are doing as well. Obviously, I'll try and make sure I mention it in the next video as well. Make sure as well, obviously, you get yourself subscribed. If you're new around here, like the video. If you did go on to enjoy it, really does help me out as well. And yeah, we will be back in actually two weeks' time now. Obviously, we've got a break week this weekend, so I can afford to relax. Yeah, we will be back in two weeks' time after the first of the British Grand Prix. A big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.